So 2019 has been an amazing year of reading. Probably, like, not even probably, it has been the best year of reading I think I've ever had or that I can at least remember. 2018 was terrible. So this has been a huge step up. I made it a personal goal this year to read more in 2019 because I think I read, like, 20 books last year and I just was in such a slump for like most of the year and I really wanted to get back into the swing of things so not only did I reach that personal goal of reading more the quality of books I read this year was just incredible so I do not have my Goodreads stats in front of me but I do remember because I, I saw it a couple days ago so I do remember it said that I read 23,000 pages this year across like 64 books. The shortest book I read this year was The Test by Sylvain Nouvelle. The longest book I read this year was The Goldfinch by Donna Tartt. And the most popular book I read this year was The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. And then the least popular book I read this year was Far Cry Absolution by Urban Waite. And spoiler alert, none of those are on this best of 2019 list, but I do have 10 books to share with you. These are I just I want all of you to go read these books these are all phenomenal so here we go these are the best books that I read in 2019 <laughs> coming in at number 10 on the best books of 2019 list is Scythe by Neil Shusterman I read this a few weeks ago and for me to read this so close to the end of the year and for it to knock out the book that I originally had in the top 10, that's pretty crazy. <laughs> so Scythe is a dystopian novel. It's the first in a trilogy, the Ark of a Scythe trilogy. I'm currently on book number two, which is Thunderhead. And in this dystopian futuristic world, people have essentially conquered death. And the only way you can die now is if a scythe takes your life in just different, in different ways. And so our main characters are Citra and Rowan, and they become apprentices to a scythe and they basically learn the art of killing and the art of taking a life but something happens and so we're getting the book from their two perspectives something happens and we're really getting their their training and how they're moving through this apprenticeship from their perspectives and just the mental toll that it has on them and oh it's so good this book is so good i love how neil schusterman just takes his time with the storytelling and really developing these two characters and their motivations are so good and just the tra how they progress through their training is so well developed and uh, I love it. If you have not started this series I highly recommend you do so. This is it's one for the books. No pun intended. Why did I just say that? Okay coming in at number nine we have Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. When I finished this book I knew immediately this was going to be in the top of something. I was just like this is this is too good not to be included in the end of the year in the end of the year top 10 list this was also a recent read for me i read this a couple months ago at this point now and whew, wow so in ninth house we're following this main character named alex stern and she's a freshman at yale and she is uh, there under the condition that she monitors the activity of the secret societies at yale so we're getting alex's story in the present day on campus as she's going about her duties of keeping an eye on these societies and something happens, a murder happens, someone from the town shows up dead on campus and so Alex is working through the mystery of that and who this girl was and what happened. So that's kind of the present day story that's happening and then we're also getting Alex in the past and just really the unfortunate, sad and traumatic upbringing that she had. I mean, this book is dark. Lee Bardugo really goes there in developing these characters and the story. I I loved it. Alex is a character that I feel like I will be thinking about for a long time. I really loved her story and not even the magical aspect of this novel. I just really loved getting to know her as a character a lot more. Like I said in my previous video, I feel like Lee Bardugo really had a strong handle on these characters and in developing them and just the setting of this campus and the occult activities of these societies it's so good i enjoyed the story i enjoyed the characters i enjoyed the history of these characters it is truly a standout of this year coming in at number eight is a book that i promised you would be seeing again soon and that is neuromancer by william gibson i am obsessed 
with this book oh my god it took me forever to finally just buckle down and read this but i am so glad i did this was a crazy ride and i enjoyed every single second of it neuromancer is a cyberpunk novel and in it we're following this main character named case and he is just going around frequenting all these bars, drinking a lot because he is now unemployed from stealing from his former employers. Case is a data thief and he used to be able to hack into cyberspace before, you know, he stole from his employers. So he's not able to do that anymore. And so he is just kind of trying to live his life as best he can and avoid the <laughs> and avoid the bounty on his head from this local drug dealer. But one day Case is approached by this woman named Molly and her employer and they give Case back his ability to hack under the condition that he helped them with a really epic, really huge job. So that is kind of the start of the story and everything just goes from there. I love this book so much. It gave me the feeling, just that excitement and that coolness that I had when I was reading Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. I haven't felt that since I picked up this. Just how much of a good time this book is so i really enjoyed it one of the things that i wasn't too crazy about was a lot of the dialogue it's it can feel really stilted sometimes and just kind of like old timey in some places but overall this this was really amazing and i'm really looking forward to reading the second book which is count zero which is going to be happening in the new year so man neuromancer you guys Perfect. Coming in at number seven, we have Leviathan Wakes, and this is by James S.A. Corey, and this is the first book in the Expanse series. And oh my God, this is so good. <laughs> this is the start of a very long, very epic science fiction series. And so in this first book, we are following the perspective of two main characters. It takes place in this world where humans have colonized different parts of the solar system we have some people on mars on earth on the moon and we have people in the ast in the asteroid belt and so we're following two main characters one of them is jim holden who is the executive officer on this ice hauler called the canterbury and then we have a detective in the asteroid belt named detective miller and there's we're getting this this first book from their two different perspectives holden's ship receives an sos from is this a spoiler? I'm not gonna spoil it. He received, his crew receives an SOS that they need to go check out. And so that's one half of the story. And then on the other side, Detective Miller has been assigned to find this missing woman named Julie Mao. And from there, there's, we're getting their separate stories and plots start unfolding. War is brewing between the different planets and the belt. And it is so fun it is so good i love these characters so much i mean if you are up for it <laughs> this is a huge novel but it is so so worth it so i highly recommend it so coming in at number six is do androids dream of electric sheep i can never say that title like without stumbling through it. and this is by philip k dick this was my very first philip k dick novel that i read earlier this year and still am so blown away by it i love this story in this this takes place in the very very near future well our near future of 2021 and in this we have an earth that has just been devastated by war and some people live on earth some people live off of earth and kind of as an incentive to get people to move off of earth they are given androids and these androids kind of serve as servants to humans but some of them have gone a little rogue that's an understatement so our main character is rick deckard and he hunts down these rogue androids and he gets this assignment to go find a handful of them and retire and retire them but the catch is these androids are like of the newest model and so they are basically like functioning humans essentially they are it's so hard to tell whether they're androids or humans or not and so the book is is rick going through this long journey of finding these androids but also this epic plot unfolding at the same time it's so good i love philip k dick's imagination and his creativity it's so much fun i think that's probably the best word to describe it this book is just fun to read about much like Neuromancer, but like obviously in a different way. If you're looking for a place to start with Philip K. Dick, I mean, not like I'm this Philip K. Dick expert or anything, but I think this is truly a great place to start. It really started me on my Philip K. Dick journey. After that, I ended up reading Ubik, which was also great. I love it. I love it. Coming in at number five, one of the best books of 2019 is This Mortal Coil, and this is by Emily Suveda. I 
cannot get enough of this story. I absolutely loved every single second of this book. It is fast, it is twisty, crazy, and so, it's just such a good book. I cannot believe how much fun I have reading this book. This was recommended to me by a really good friend of mine and she just kept talking about it and I was like, okay, I'm gonna read it and I did and we had just, I had so much fun with her just like talking about this book and I cannot wait for the third one to come out in early January. In this world, this is a young adult science fiction novel and in this we have this main character named Kat who is a gene hacker and this world people have panels in their arms where they can control different aspects the different features of like their dna to you know for physical appearance things like that they have healing nanites all this kind of stuff cat's father is a renowned geneticist and the story starts when her father is taken by this corporation for for i don't know for for his work basically because this plague has spread and when he disappears it's up to cat to kind of figure out what her father's work is all about but at the same time she's trying to evade this corporation who wants to take her in because she's special for some reason it is so good it is in top five spot for a reason this was great one of the best books i've read this year coming in at number four is the fifth season and this is by nk jemison and this is the first book in the broken earth trilogy oh my god where where do we start i read this book and the other two in the trilogy over the summer and this book is still on my mind it the story is unreal nk jemison knows how to tell a story it is it's it's crazy <laughs> what really blew me away about this book aside from just the overall plot of it is witnessing N.K. Jemisin's writing for the first time. It's seriously unreal. It's the her control of the tone of the writing and just structure and everything, dialogue. It is so masterful <laughs> in a sense. I don't even know another word for it. Seriously, watching this story unfold and like reading her writing is was probably the highlight of my year. This was excellent. The fifth season kind of blends the line between fantasy and post-apocalyptic. We have this world called the stillness and the people in the stillness, they are accustomed to all these catastrophic events and the world always ending. So it's just a normal day for them. And so we have this group of people, their actual titles escaping me. I think it's like origins or something like that. And they kind of have control over these like catastrophic events that take place throughout the land. So in the fifth season, we are following this book from three different perspectives. And I don't, that's all I'm really gonna say about that. <laughs> it really, it begins when this event kind of ricochets throughout the land and we're really witnessing three different characters navigate through that. The way everything just unfolds and comes together was seriously the highlight of my year it was this was amazing and the rest of the books in the trilogy are just as strong it's one of my favorite series now of all time oh my god you guys we're in the top three right now it's getting it's getting a little wild coming in at number three <laughs> nobody is going to be surprised daisy jones and the six and this is by taylor jenkins reed this was the first book i read this year that is this makes sense it's the first book that i read this year that is making this list i think i read this back in february or march i am so i'm still so in love with this i feel like i'm falling back into that huge fangirl moment that i had earlier this year when i was like reading this book so we're following this band called the six and how they ended up with daisy jones and we're basically following their rise to stardom in what is it the 80s late early 80s or something like that um in los angeles and just kind of how they take over the rock and roll scene and so this book is seriously chronicling just everything happening within the band all the tension relationships the songwriting and basically their their journey and their tours and their stardom and their fame it all culminates in this one final moment in chicago when the band fell apart and that's not a spoiler it's in the synopsis so you kind of have that anticipation in the back of your mind seeing where everything leads and how everything falls apart oh my goodness it was this was such a pleasure to read the way like, taylor jenkins read just created whole songs for this band 
and the character of Daisy Jones is so cool and really Taylor Jenkins Reid like captured the essence like seriously that essence of rock and roll and music in that time period and it is grimy in some places and it is uh, it's unglamorous but it's also really glamorous in some places and it, this book was great it was seriously great and one moment seriously that still this is not a spoiler it still sticks out with me after all these months I remember there was this scene when the band had to do this photo shoot and the way Taylor Jenkins Reid describes the photo shoot and what everybody was doing and wearing and talking about it from the perspective of the photographer and people on set it was that is truly a moment of my reading year that will stay with me for a while. That was probably like the coolest moment I've ever read about. This is told in the interview style format. And so we're getting the book from basically the perspective of Daisy and the lead, the other lead singer, Billy, and the band and the people around them, their management. And oh my God, it was, this was perfect. Coming in at number two, should also not be a surprise to anybody. And that's Exhalation. And this is by Ted Shang. I'm trying not to be, I'm not, I feel like sometimes I can be like a really dramatic person, but I'm not being dramatic when I say, I feel like this book is, well, this collection of stories is truly a work of genius. Exhalation is Ted Shang's second short story collection. And in it, we have nine stories that are just wide ranging. I love Ted Shang's writing so much. His stories really make you think about your existence and other people and human nature and our place in the world. I, God, I don't even know how to talk about this book. I, I truly loved every story in here, every second of it. My favorite story though, if you all pick this up and are curious, my favorite story in here is called The Truth of Fact, The Truth of Feeling. In it, we have this journalist who hasn't had the greatest relationship with his daughter and there is this technology in it that lets people relive moments of their lives almost reminds me of that black mirror episode called the entire history of you actually that's exactly what it reminds me of let's just say it but we have um two different stories happening in that short story so <sighs> it's excellent every time i got to the end of a story that last line of the story for some reason always gave me goosebumps i i don't know what it is i don't know what it is it his stories always just end on a note that gets you and I really just like could not do anything else but sit there and think for a second. It, it's it's mind blowing, it's mind blowing, it's genius and 10 out of 10. I can't believe we are down to the final book. This is the best book I have read in 2019. This is the best book I've read in the last couple of years. It is now one of my favorite books of all time. I will seriously recommend it to everybody even if <laughs> it is extremely slow but I just, I think everybody should experience it or at least try to experience it at least one time. That book is Do You Dream of Terra 2? And this is by Temi O. Oh. This book has touched me in a way and has stayed with me in a way where I feel like if I go on too long about it, I might start crying. <laughs> this is so awkward. I, I love this book. I cannot convey that enough. I love everything about this story. This is a tome, it's huge, it's over 500 pages and every single page is worth it. The story is slow as molasses, but it is worth it. And the way it is told, it has just seriously stayed on my heart all year. In Do You Dream of Terra 2, we have this group of astronauts, six of whom are teenagers, and then we have four experienced astronauts. And they are all going on a 23 year long journey to an Earth-like planet to, to colonize that planet and to keep humanity going essentially. And this is a huge, job for teenagers you know i don't it really it really gets to you after a while because the journey in the back of your mind you have that this journey takes 23 years and you have this group of characters in this small space it's like they're you know they're showering and they're eating dinner and they're having conversations and they're doing work and all this kind of stuff and it has such a claustrophobic feel to it because you're like, they have to keep doing this for 23 years in this little space. And I swear to God, I was getting like claustrophobic reading this. But at the same time, they're in this cramped space with this huge journey on their shoulders. And yet they have still carried everything from earth with them, depression, leaving their families behind, things that they were worried about on earth didn't just magically disappear. They have carried all of that up in space with them. And we have six different personalities, well 10 technically with the adults, 
all these different personalities in this small space with all the problems from Earth and an epic journey in front of them. We are getting a really close and personal look at these characters not only through their interactions with each other, but some characters have their own flashback chapters of their home lives. This was excellent. That is really all I can say about that without this video being 45 to an hour long. I highly, I highly recommend it. So just please go read this. <laughs> I will say upfront, I do not think everybody is gonna like this story because I admit it can, it can feel really boring. So I won't hold it against you if you put it down. <laughs> yeah. I, that's that's the best book of the year for me that is it for me you guys I hope you all have an amazing New Year's Eve New Year's Day stay safe I personally want to thank all of you for an incredible 2019 I have seriously enjoyed interacting with you guys on here on Instagram and commenting on your videos and hearing your recommendations in the comments of books that I should check out it has seriously been an amazing year all the way around so i want to thank you guys and hello to all of the new subscribers i feel truly thankful and blessed and i just want to keep making making content in the new decade oh my god that's so weird to say this might be my last video of 2019 possibly so you know if it is i will see you guys in the new year and ready for a new decade of reading so thank you guys so much and i will see you in the next one take care